Well, you know, these so-called rules of thought of experiments, thought experiments are also judged based on how many assumptions you have to make, right? You make these assumptions, you say, hey, make these, suspend your disbelief, make these assumptions. I get to judge which things you made me believe to do that. Now, the drunk driving example has many problems with the way you're applying it. For one, when I said you have no claim on me, it's because I can't possibly hit you on this road of genetics, right? Getting on the road, drunk driving, that's procreating. But you are not on those roads at all. It's not hooked. The only people on these roads are my own offspring. They're the only people that could be hit with a bad life, right? So those, that group of people, yes, that group of people, like some subset of my uh, offspring could, could make some judgment. They could share a claim, and then including a claim against potential, against negligent behavior, against them. But it can't affect you. I can't procreate and produce you. You can't get wrecked into. I can't create your miserable life by procreating. So that's what I'm saying. That's the problem with, with your example. And you want to just, you think that the rules of thought experiment are that I have to think the world is drunk driving, then I have to justify drunk driving. No. And I don't have to justify people that don't take my attitude about kids. I think people that don't really care about their kids don't feel obligated to the kids and the grandkids and, for that matter, their fellow man. I don't think that they should reproduce. No, I don't have to justify their dominance in the world any more than you have to judge justify the dominance of natalists, of honest-to-goodness natalists. I'm just anti-anti-natalists, but natalists and that majority you were complaining about. Are you responsible for that? I'm not responsible for people that think that since you know that they can enslave their kids when they don't enslave themselves you don't have that right to enslave even your future self it just is not justified but for separate reasons you said it in this video I'm replying to the crime is that they were born that the, that Pinochet was given birth to that his victims were given birth to and that's simply not good enough you know I can see that your justification comes down to uh, bad granularity. You do not have the resolution to realize, no, the most direct cause of the problem with the people Pinochet killed was the way Pinochet ran Chile. Okay. Um, the other thing we are going to differ on, you're not going to get this. You say I haven't justified, but I have justified. I'm not playing God. I don't think a fly is playing God when it lays an egg that then hatches. No, because it doesn't know. It's accidentally playing God. That's not... God. It doesn't take God. If a fly can do it, it's not particularly God-like. And my argument that I can use my bodily tissue, which is able to grow into a new individual to do so, is the same as the pro-choice argument of why you can have an abortion. It is your tissue. It's your medical decision. Now, it's possible to say, oh, but that kid will grow up and then take food from other kids in the world. And that's a claim that people that are going to have the other kids could make. But then again, they're going to have kids, so they can't make it based on having kids. They have to make it based on let's have a more fair world economy like someone like me argues. It is not playing God because the life is already going. You have a s simplistic, antiquated, not realistic not really the way things are view that it's playing God that I'm creating life that flies and and uh, beetles and everybody is playing God all over obviously no it's a lot easier it does not take godlike powers to procreate and no living being ever has has created life right it was a non-living process that created life and then it was living and it continued and you know that fact and you're going to ignore it. And that's not a metaphor. That's not a pretend life is bullshit. Then tell me why you want to eat shit. This is real facts. That really is true. Living creatures don't create life. Life continues. Tissues that are already living are involved. You can't, you can't procreate with dead sperm. And I can't do anything I want with my reproductive capability so long as I find somebody, the other half that is needed for that, 
also willingly doing it. Again, because that is a person that can make a complaint. Right? I've not forced myself. And no, it's not like drunk driving because I can't run into you. There is no way to run. It's a very a subset. So it's a subset that comes from my own life. I believe there is a chain of life. I am my ancestors. But your brain was different. Yeah, well, my two halves of my brain, if they're separated, they have separate consciousness. They'd still think they were both in the same body and all the rest of it. I am linked. And even if you have parents that ignore their obligations, which is what parents should realize and grandparents and great-grandparents, their obligation to what they've brought into the world and its condition, even if they don't recognize it, they're still the link. They're just in denial. They're still the link. And it, they're just in denial. And their consciousness is separated from mine. And it's also somewhat connected if I know them. And I think there's an obligation to know them and connect those consciousness, uh, the consciousness of all the parties together. And so I see this chain of life. And I, I think it, you, you, you just don't want to face it. It's a pretty obvious argument. If you came to a planet teeming with life, and then you're an alien, and then you leave, and you come back a thousand years later, and everything has decided to become antinatalist, or refuse to reproduce, and you come back to that planet, and there's no life, you wouldn't, you don't think that it would be accurate to say that the planet died. What killed it? Well, this philosophy of antinatalism. Even if you're an antinatalist and you go, oh, good, they're in a better place, or by not existing at all and being nowhere, it would still be something live, living, became something dead. You know, if you were to just sterilize a subset of the population, well, that would not be okay. Why? They haven't done anything to them. Well, because in comparison to the people that you haven't limited. So obviously you've taken something away because... The only way you can make it sound even is if you take it away from everybody at once. So you're taking something away that you refuse to discuss what it is. Okay, and it's life. Because that is how life continues. It doesn't always just continue through your skin cells regrowing so that you can heal. It doesn't always just continue for you and regenerate for you. One of the ways it does is it regenerates into whole new bodies. That's part of life. You want to call it being God and creating life. But it's, it's obvious. It doesn't take any argument to see it's not a creation of life. That's why the kids look so much like the parents. You know. And um, the, the drunk driving thing is just your attempt to put a negative thing on it. I think it's not as good as the cannibalism argument. Also an attempt uh, to, to inject some negative uh, terminology directly into it. But the drunk driving is just absurd because... If I'm getting on this road, it's a road with only my family, only people that that exist or not because of me. And I have family. I'm not the initiator. I didn't create the family. I'm already in it. And, and we can judge whether we like our chances at life and how to treat each other and other people. And what you're missing is that that's the answer, is that people just need to learn how to treat each other better. Okay. And... If you think people learning to stop living, stop their species, is going to be easier than teaching them how to treat each other better, then you're nuts.